Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for the introduction to the Helios Series Dual Line Large Display Webinar. My name is Devin Gates, and I'm here with the Precision Digital Product Manager, Joe Ryan, and we will be your host today. During the next half hour, we will be going over the unique features that set the Helios apart from every other large display on the market. And we're also going to take a look at some real-world applications that the Helios would be perfect for. Just as a reminder, all participants are currently on mute, so if you have any questions during any part of the presentation, please use the chat box on the lower left-hand side of the screen, and we will answer them periodically and also after the presentation. Also, the webinar is being recorded and will be sent to the email address that you registered with us today. Before we begin, we would like to ask you a few questions. So if you would take a few minutes here, and um, we'd like to know where in the world our audience is located. Well, it looks like a mass, mass majority of us are from the eastern U.S., and we have some from outside of the U.S. So again, thank you all for joining us today. I have one more question for you folks, and we would love to know who in our audience today is responsible for actually specifying instrumentation and how often. In a few moments here, I'm going to close the poll. I just want to give everyone a, a chance to answer if you wish. Well, as you can see, it seems like we have a lot of influencers here today. So again, we thank you for joining us, and we hope you enjoyed today's presentation. Now I'm going to turn it over to Joe. Joe, if you could tell us what the Helios is all about, that would be great. All right. Well, thank you, Devin. I'd be happy to do just that. So given we're here today to talk about the Helios series, the, the pressing question, of course, is, well, what is the Helios? What is the Helios? And the Helios, as you can see this first bullet here, is a full line of large display field-mounted meters and controllers. So let's consider what that means for a minute. By a full line, we mean that the Helios is available with a wide range of options, features, input types, and basic functions. Everything from batch control to basic level display. It's a large display product. You can see here we've got it next to a tennis ball as a size comparison, and the digits are huge compared to what you're going to find on a standard panel meter. It's a field-mounted meter, which means that, again, as you can see in this photo, it comes in an enclosure that's completely surrounded. So you don't mount this into a panel. You don't put it uh, inside of a electronic housing. Uh, it comes in a box that is ready to be mounted and the conduits can be connected directly up to it. It's also a line of meters and controllers, meaning that not only are these great for display applications, but they've got control features as well. Whether that's high and low alarms, uh, multi-stage batch control, or using a 4 to 20 output to go back to your control room, there's a lot of features on these that make them more than just a basic display. The Helios is IP65 rated, which means it's a great enclosure for outdoor installations. For those of you unfamiliar with the IP code, 65 means that you are uh, dust tight, so you won't get dust penetration through the enclosure. And the waterproofing of it is proof against uh, water jetting which means that you are essentially okay for most outdoor applications and washdown applications so long as you don't have a particularly powerful washdown jet being sprayed at it. Uh, some people compare this to a NEMA 4 or a NEMA 4X rating. Uh, I'm not going to do that because it's an IP rating, but that's what the IP65 refers to as dust tight and proof against water jets. I'll mention it many times during the presentation, but it's great for outdoor installations as well because it has a sunlight readable display. It's a super bright display that you can read even in direct sunlight. 
It's got six of those super bright LEDs on each of the two lines. So the top and the bottom line, as you see here, you've got 260051. Those are six full digits. And then you've got six full digits on the bottom display as well, which in this case are being used as a tag to show you units of what's being displayed above it. That's one of the big advantages of that dual line display. These digits are 1.8 inches tall, which means that they're three times the height of a standard panel meter display. So you can easily see these from up to 100 feet away. That is great for any critical process in your plant or uh, out in your yard where you need to know that people are aware of what's happening. Now maybe that's because a, a truck is driving by and just wants to be able to see what the value is, or maybe that's just because you want a operator in a tower to be able to see what's happening out on the, out on the tank farm or, or out by the actual process. Uh, but you definitely don't want your critical processes to be ignored, and this display will make sure that they aren't. One of the great things about the Helios is that it brings the power of our ProView line of panel meters into a package that makes it able to be seen from 100 feet away. What I mean by that is that the electronics that run the Helios are based on those out of our ProView series, our flagship panel meter line. And that means you've got all of the features that you may be familiar with in that PD6000 series available now in a field-mounted large display package. That means you have access to Modbus capabilities, feet and inches displays, four relays, four to 20 milliamp outputs, two power supplies, you name it. And I'm sure many of you are already familiar with that ProView series, and if you're familiar with them, their model numbers, and how they program, then you're already familiar with the Helios. It's just a different packaging of the same type of product. For example, there's a product known as the PD2-6310. Now that's the Helios large display pulse input batch controller. So it connects directly up to a flow meter, reads the pulses, and does batch control based on a preset. Those are all the same features of our PD6310 ProView panel meter. The only difference is the way that they're packaged and the way you mount and view them. Those super bright LEDs are great for direct sunlight, but also good for any kind of application where they're going to be exposed to smoke, fog, dust buildup. The display is really going to shine through anything that might block a standard panel meter size display from being viewed. I've seen them myself, and I can assure you that these are visible from up to 100 feet away. They may even be visible further than that if you've got good vision, but we feel confident with the 100-foot rating. And this really is the most informative large display meter on the market with two large line displays. And what we mean by that is that the second display makes it much more informative than a single line display. It's great to have a giant number displayed next to a tank, but does that number represent feet, inches, percent full? Is it a volume? No one's going to know if you don't have something there telling them what that number represents. And because we've got that second line display, we can tell you what we're looking at. There's no question when you look at that picture that's on the screen now, you are looking at something that's 2,600.51 uh, liters. I don't need to have some kind of small sticker that I've stuck on there with a label maker there that no one's going to be able to read. The display takes care of it, and it displays it in that same huge digit. Now, how do you wire up this product, given that most of it's display? Well, that's easy. You use the wiring compartment that you see at the bottom of the enclosure. We have both a picture showing you how that wiring compartment opens, and we've got a wiring or a, a uh, pinout diagram in the picture here that shows you what kind of features that you can get on this product. What we're showing here is our PD2-6001. So you have a feet and inches display on the left that's showing you 38 feet, 10 inches, and 15 sixteenths. And we're using the bottom display just to indicate that this is the level indication of whatever we have that's connected up to, probably a tank. The picture in the lower right shows you that you can get this with onboard digital inputs and outputs. So I could have the digital outputs go to a 
PLC if I want to use that for alarming or use the digital inputs if I want to for an external control station so that I can have remote buttons to press if I want to do that for control or uh, programming of the unit. I can have RS-485, which will let this communicate with Modbus. I can have four relays for control and alarming, a 4 to 20 million output, which I may send back to the control room, for example. And then I've got my signal input connections. In this case, P plus, P minus, which is a power supply, which will help me run my transmitter or my 4 to 20 input loop. My F4, which is another digital input. And then the common, the V plus, and the milliamp plus, which are used for my 4 to 20 milliamp or voltage signals that would be coming in to my PD2-6001. We've got power connections there. And that's both input power, which can be high voltage, like 120 or 240 volts, or low voltage, like a 12 or 24 volt DC signal. And we've also got power connections on there for those two onboard 24 volt power supplies that are available. One that's standard and one that's available as an option. We've also got a USB connector on here, and we'll see in a little bit, that brings a whole new world of functionality and ease of use to this product. That wiring compartment, by the way, is available with a, uh, is accessible via a screw, and it comes with the ability to use a uh, loop seal on it if you need to secure it. How do you get the wires into a product like this, the field mount box? Well, all the wires will be fed through pre-cut conduit holes located at the bottom of the enclosure. The picture you're looking at on the right shows you the bottom of the PD2 Helios product. And you can see that there are, are two holes that are open, which you can bring your conduit into to bring your signal or your power. And then there's another two holes that we pre-cut for you. But as you may not need them, we plug them with uh, seals so that you don't have to fumble around and try to find your own conduit plug. Uh, if you need them, you can just back those conduit plugs out, and you can attach the conduit directly into the case. But if you don't need them, we provide them sealed for you. That conduit plug is available as an accessory if you need to buy more, should you drill more holes, or if you find that for some reason you only need one conduit opening. I mentioned the USB feature earlier, so let me talk about that for a moment. Every Helio ships with a USB cable, and you can use that to connect up to uh, a PC that is capable of running our MeterView Pro software. MeterView Pro software makes programming the Helios quick and easy because we provide you with an English language interface rather than learning seven segment display, and rather than using the buttons that are on the meter, you just have to click and type in your numbers. What's great about the Helios is that the programming software comes installed on the meter itself. So if I have a laptop with no internet connection and I'm out in the field with the Helios and I seem to have lost all my CDs that contain the software on them, and I literally all I have is just the product and my laptop, I can get the software right off of the Helios. I just plug in my USB cable and I get the software directly from the product itself. In addition, the USB cable is capable of powering on the product so that while it may not have all the features like relays and port clean outs, it will light up the display and it will let the computer talk to the Helios. So the setup that you see here where we have a laptop and the Helios and the USB cable connecting the two, running MeterView Pro to program the Helios and the display is on, that's accurate. I don't need to have a power cord. I don't need to have an internet connection. I literally just need the product and the laptop. This makes the Helios our easiest meter to program yet. You don't need to uh, fumble through an instruction manual to figure out how to do your programming. You don't need to learn what the seven segment displays are trying to tell you. You don't even need to download and install software or any kind of special drivers. All the drivers that this product uses come standard with Windows now. So you can't ask for something that's going to be easier for an installer to get, take out of the box, plug into their computer and go. And Devin, looks like you have a question for the audience. I certainly do, and thank you for that explanation, Joe. Um, you know, we've answered the question before, where are you all from? But now we would love to know which industry you are in. So if you could take a few moments here and just answer the question on your screen.
And, <clears throat> and in a few moments, we are going to be answering the questions that have come in because we have gotten a few questions about the Helios product. Alrighty, and as we can see here, we have a lot of industrial distributors here today. So again, thank you for joining us. And now I want to field some of the questions that have come in. Uh, Joe, you can answer them as they come in. Uh, the first question is, what size are the conduit holes? Uh, you know, that is a great question. And if you give me one second, I bet you I can come up with that answer for you. Uh, let's see here. As this is a new product, I won't claim to have committed everything about it to memory. Uh, and I think that I might just get back to you on that. Uh, if we can record down who it was who asked that question, I'd be happy to respond to them. I know it's a standard size, but uh, as it's not a, this isn't, this isn't a, um, a threaded explosion proof enclosure conduit entry, this is a plastic conduit pass through, and I'll need to check on the sizing on that and get back to you. It's a good question. Pause that I don't have an answer for it, but to anyone who has that similar question, we will certainly get back to you and let you know. Perfect. Uh, the next question would be, is it a proprietary cable? And I'm assuming that means for the programming. Uh, it is not a proprietary cable. The USB cable, uh, one, you, you get it with the product, which is nice to know, but you can find these available elsewhere. Uh, it uses a standard micro USB, I'm sorry, this doesn't use a micro, it uses a standard USB connection to get to the laptop. Uh, and the other end that connects up to the Helios is the uh, normal square USB connection. I think it's a USB-B, I believe, so don't quote me on that. Uh, so you should be able to get one of these USB cables essentially anywhere who sells USB cables. You won't have to do that because we provide you with the cable, but you could go out and get more or additional cables very easily if you wanted to. Perfect. And the final question in this session here is, is there any way to prevent someone from accessing the programming, <clears throat> the programming buttons or at least prevent them from changing the program settings? There's actually several ways you can do that. The first and, and easiest way is going to be use the password protection features of the meter. There's three levels of password protection that you can set, depending on what level of access you want operators to have without the password. And then another way you could choose to do that is by using that uh, loop seal that I mentioned earlier. Uh, there are pass-throughs on that cover that seals shut that allow you to put a loop seal through it and secure it. And that would prevent someone from not only accessing the buttons, but it would prevent somebody from accessing any of the wiring as well without breaking that loop seal. So there's a few different ways that you could do that, but the answer is definitely yes. You, you can protect the meter from someone getting in there and uh, messing with the programming in a way that the original installer didn't intend. Awesome. Those are all very great questions, and we thank you for asking them. Now we're going to move on, and we're going to take a, look, a closer look at what the Helios has to offer and the different options that it comes in. So Joe, if you could uh, take a further look into the Helios. I'd be happy to. I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation that the Helios was a full line of meters and controllers. And we're going to step through each one very briefly just to give you an idea of the different types of products that are available. For those of you who are familiar with the ProView series of digital panel meters, these are going to look somewhat familiar. The most popular Helios will be by far the PD2-6000. And this is essentially your standard display product. It accepts a analog current or voltage input, so your 4 to 20 milliamp or your 0 to 10 volt signal. It displays that usually on the top line, and then you'd have the bottom line that you would use for showing a, uh, a unit or a tag. Because it accepts a 4 to 20 signal, you can use this and scale that display for a level, a pressure, a speed, a humidity reading, uh, even a signal from a temperature transmitter. You can scale that 4 to 20 milliamp signal to be any engineering unit you'd like, so it's capable of going into any application where you want to display what your process variable is. It's got optional relays, which allow it to do pump alternation control, which is a great way to save the life of your pumps, but also to make sure that you don't run into a situation where your backup pump is long since frozen, nobody knows, and when you need it, it fails on you. So it's great for level control. It's got signal input conditioning for open channel flow and irregularly shaped tanks for level. 
which makes programming it for those applications much easier than uh, older products that are out there. And again, it's got that second line, which can not only show the unit or a tag, but it's capable of showing a second scale of your single input. So for example, I could be bringing in my 4 to 20 milliamp signal, showing it in volume on the top and percent full on the bottom, or a level on the top and in terms of feet, and then the volume on the bottom. So it's two different displays of the same signal, but scaled differently. So there's a lot of things that you can do with that 6,000, that PD2 6,000 Helios. And unless you're doing one of these other applications we're about to talk about, it's really where you start when specifying a Helios product. We've seen previously this feet and inches level display, where in this case I'm showing 60 feet, 8 inches, and 11 sixteenths. It's great because it's easy for people to understand feet and inches displays. It's harder to comprehend something like 7,000 inches or 72.35 feet. You tell someone it's 60 feet, 8 inches, everyone has a good sense of what that means, and most tanks are specified in feet and inches. So to let them know how it's doing versus the, the total height of the tank. It's perfect for all level applications. And it's got the same types of features as the one we just looked at. So it too has pump alternation control and the signal input conditioning. It also has that dual scale capability, so I could use the bottom display to show, for example, a percent full. There are rate totalizers available, both analog inputs for 4 to 20 signals and pulse inputs or direct flow meter inputs. Because you've got the dual line, you're capable of showing your display rate and your total simultaneously, like the one we see here. The top display letting me know that my rate's 26.2 and my total's 8,262. These have a total and a grand total, and for applications that require it, the grand total is capable of being set up to be non-resettable. The pulse input model here is particularly good because if you are taking in the pulse, which has a, a limited distance you can run it, you can then retransmit that as a 4 to 20 milliamp signal out to your control room. We have dual input versions of these products available, both a dual input version of the PD2-6000, which is your standard display, and dual input versions of both rate totalizers. Not only do these allow you to combine two signals so that you can have two process variables displayed, each one having an alternating unit and tag displayed with it, but it lets you do math functions. So in applications where you need addition, difference, multiplication, ratios, um, mixing two chemicals, uh, this is a great way to bring those two signals into a single product that can easily be programmed up to get you the output of that math function and then display it large so that everyone can see it. There's a batch controller version of the product. Again, these are available with analog or pulse inputs, so 4 to 20, or pulses out of flow meter. They're able to display the preset and the batch total simultaneously on the dual line display. So that picture that you see here is showing me that my preset is 500, and I've currently batched 462.1. Because they have up to four relays, you're able to program them for multi-stage batching. So if you have a main feed valve and then a trickle valve, you can get very accurate batches with them. Speaking of accurate batches, they all have automatic overflow protection. Automatic overflow protection is used to sense if an overflow occurred in the last batch and make adjustments to the timing so that you don't get it in subsequent batches. And like all of the Helios products, it's got onboard digital inputs, so you could have this mounted anywhere you want. It doesn't have to necessarily be within arm's reach of the operator, and you could use an external control station to have buttons available to them, either to keep them from having to open the bottom or just to, to put something locally that they can operate it with. There are strain gauge input versions of the product, which are used for load cells or millivolt inputs. And you can get up to 12 load cells averaged into this product. So if you're doing something with large scales, you're able to bring in all 12 of those load cells, average up that signal, and get the weight display. There's an auto zero feature. It helps to eliminate drift that shows up over time, where it's capable of 
sensing that gradual drift off of zero and making adjustments to eliminate it. And it's got care features as well. This also has that dual scale capability. So that strain input can be displayed in two different scales. So once again, you could have weight and volume that that weight represents if you are filling a hopper, for example. Then we've got the PD2-6400, which is the high voltage and high current input version of the ILIOS. And it accepts both of those inputs simultaneously. So I could bring in uh, a high voltage and a high current, meaning 300 volts or 5 amps, into the product and have both of those displayed thanks to that dual line display. It's capable of doing some basic calculations, like apparent power on those numbers. And any of those variables can be retransmitted as a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. And then we've got the PD2-7000, which is your direct temperature input version. I mentioned earlier you could use temperature transmitters in their 4 to 20 milliamp signal with the PD2-6000. The 7000 takes in thermocouples and RTDs directly. And it can display those temperatures with 1 degree or 0.1 degree resolution. You can average up to 10 RTD sensors. It includes automatic cold junction compensation for ease of installation and programming. The temperature units can display in line with the temperature measurement. So if you look at that picture on the right, this is another way to take advantage of that dual line display. You can read that this is 2,098 degrees Fahrenheit. And because the degrees Fahrenheit is on that upper display with the temperature, my bottom display can be used, in this case, to label it up as the furnace 8 temperature. So again, it's a way to get more information to your operators using that huge display. And then lastly, we have our Modbus scanner products. Everything in the Helio series is capable of being a Modbus slave, so you can pull information out of it into your control system. The PD2-6080 and the PD2-6081 are capable of being Modbus RTU masters, slaves, or snoopers, like a packet sniffer. And what that means is that if you have Modbus transmitters, you can pull those Modbus transmitters and bring back up to 16 process variables from them so that I could display, for example, four sets of top level, interface level, and temperature from four different Modbus level transmitters, as an example. I don't need to rely on 4 to 20 milliamp signals for that, and I don't need to have a separate Modbus master. The Modbus scanners will do all of that for you and act as the master on the lot, master on the for, uh, <coughs> excuse me on the RS485 line. So it'll sit on the RS485 line, be a Modbus master, pull that data out. Or if you already have a control system that's using Modbus, this can be a packet sniffer just watching the packets go by, not interrupting the signal that already exists as the, the master in the control room pulls out those variables, but it can display them locally for the operators. So it's a way to add something in to your Modbus system without disrupting the master in the control room talking to the slaves that might be transmitters on top of the tank. And then you have math functions that it can perform on the inputs. And there is a feet and inches display model of this available which would be the PD2-6081. So that gives you an idea of all the different types of Helios that are available. So as you can see, it really is suitable for a wide range of applications, and that's why we call it a full line of large display meters and controllers. And Devin, do we have any more questions? We certainly do, and I would like to thank everyone for sticking around. We are close to the end of the presentation, and as you've seen, no matter what sort of process you are trying to monitor or control, the Helios can really get the job done. Just like all precision digital products, they will work with any brand transmitter you may already have in your facility, so there's no worry about compatibility. That being said, let's take a look at some of the questions that came in. We certainly have a few here. All righty. One listener asked, does the strain gauge unit include precision excitation power supply and sense line compensation? Uh, yes, it does. It has, uh, it has an excitation power supply to run the load cell, for example. Um, and then what was the second half of that, Devin, that they had asked? 
cent line compensation? I want to say it does, but before I commit to that, it sounds like you have an application in mind or you might use a lot of these. So uh, I would ask that questioner to give us a call and talk to us a little bit about that because that could be a very nuanced answer. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, one audience member would like to know, but the temperature limits, they are in an oil patch, and negative 20 degrees or lower is not uncommon. You are going to have no problem with negative 20 degrees. Uh, these units are available from, or, or operate from minus 40 to 65 degrees C. So at minus 20, you should be just fine. Great. And are there demo units available for these? Uh, there are. If you're a distributor who wants to be able to show these to their customers, you really couldn't ask for a, a simpler product to show off. Given that the most critical feature of it is its large display, uh, we make demo units available to you that all you do just that. Go into your customer, plug it in, show them the huge display, and start that discussion around what kinds of applications or what kind of locations uh, could use that kind of a display. Uh, so demo units are certainly available. And if you talk to any salesperson here, we would be happy to discuss that with you. Awesome. And one last question we have here is about pump control. And if the Helios does have feedback fault alarming. The Helios does not have feedback fault alarming. The way it helps protect your pumps and your systems that those pumps are connected to is by using the pump alternation control features. And what that means is that every time it enters the state, where one of your pumps would have to turn on. For example, let's say I'm draining a sump. Every time that high level is reached, it alternates which relay is closing and therefore which pump is turning on. And so while it doesn't feed back the operation of the pump, it's going to share the load of keeping that sump drained between two pumps. And if you have a failure in one, that will be detected fairly quickly because when it goes to cycle to that pump, it's going to fail. And then as your level continues to rise, it can be programmed such that it will turn the other pump on anyway. So it has a, a fail-safe ability in there to turn on the working pumps, even if one of the pumps does fail. But it will detect the failed pump sooner because it will have means of notifying the operators through alarms, et cetera, that you hit a level you never should have if your pumps were turning on properly. You need to go and look and see which ones are failing on you. So it doesn't have a direct feedback from uh, a pump controller, for example, into a digital input. But the way it operates with the pump alternation control helps you keep the pumps healthy, helps make sure that faults are spotted quickly should a pump fail, and then overrides the pump alternation to turn on the pumps that do work if the level were to continue to rise. Perfect. And our final question is something that I can answer. Someone asked if there is explosion proof available. And the answer to that question is not in this series. However, as we move on, we're going to take a look at some real-world applications with our other large display families, and you will see that we do have a large display in an explosion proof housing. So Joe, if you could take us through some of the real-world applications. I certainly can. So the Helios is a brand new product for Precision Digital. And unfortunately, that means I don't have good application photos to show you yet. Now, I would love some of you in the audience to be amongst the first people to send in Helios application photos. So if you're thinking about where you might be able to sell these into or what applications you have that might be appropriate for it, I'd love to turn that into an application photo that we could then show in webinars like this one. What I can use as examples of where these can go is photos and stories from our other large display products. And those of you who are particularly familiar with Precision Digital might recognize those products here on the right. We've got other single-line field-mounted large display products, as well as a large display single-line panel meter. So some examples of what we've seen people use these for is, in this case, saltwater tank level at a truck loading station. The reason why this was great for large display, in this case, are Trident X2s that have a 1.2 inch high digit is that these large displays, in the case of this Trident X2, are sunlight readable, and they're NEMA 4X, so they're great for outdoor applications. And in this application, what someone is doing is pulling a truck up to this location, and they like to be able to see, either from the cab or from the location where they're connecting the truck to be loaded, what the levels are in those various tanks. 
you can see from the photo that the Vega level transmitter is installed at the top of the tank. And while it does have a display on it, that is not going to be very helpful to anyone. And so this is a way to get a grade level display that's large enough for the operators to see as they're pulling up to do their job here. These Tri-Nex 2s were great for the application because it, it met all those needs, but it's a panel meter. So they had to install an electronic cabinet to have these in there. And if you look at that photo, you don't necessarily know what they're reading. You can see 11.75, 12.08, but there's no second line on them to give you a, a unit or a tag. You could use a Helios here, where not only do you now have the, the enclosure for it, right with the product because of the field mount product, but you've got that second line that would be capable of telling you exactly what you're looking at here and giving you either a unit or maybe even a unit and a tank number to associate it with. This picture shows, shows oil refinery pump control. You, you had asked that question earlier, Devin, about uh, explosion-proof products, I believe, and this is a great example of an explosion-proof large display product. Now, in this case, it's using pump alternation control on an explosion-proof version of that Tri-Mix 2 from our Protex Max series, uh, which, again, so it comes with sunlight-readable displays, a nice large display, but it suffers from the disadvantage of no second line, so they had to put labels on the front of them here to let you know that we're talking pump 301 south and pump 301 north. While the Helios is not a explosion-proof product and has no hazardous area approvals, you can see where an outdoor pump controller that's monitoring level can be extremely useful in safe areas as well. For example, there are a lot of uh, water, wastewater, and pump station applications that could be doing just this sort of job. And the last one we'll take a look at here is a boiler drum level uh, monitoring solution from a sugar refinery. There are plenty of dials and switches and buttons on the wall, but the largest thing in the room prior to the installation of our tri next to panel meter was the clock, which I guess sort of tells you what the operator's priorities were. They had a process variable they wanted to read in, in terms of boiler drum level monitoring that was the most critical thing to display on this entire wall of instrumentation. And so they used a large display meter to make sure that the operator who sits across this control room could see it just by turning around in their chair. But because this is a panel meter product, they had to cut a hole in the panel and find somewhere on this wall that it could install because that's where all their wiring is. You could have used the Helios for this application. There's even a nice spot for it in the upper right of the photo where you see they could have mounted it in between some other instrumentation and they wouldn't have had to cut that eighth thin cutout to fit the panel meter in there. It also would have been the largest display in the room at that point, even larger than the clock there. So everyone would have noticed it coming into the room. So that might give you an idea of some of the reasons people go with large display products, some of the applications you might keep an eye out for, basically anywhere where someone has a, a critical process value that they need to make sure that people see, or somewhere where they're outdoors and looking to do some kind of control with it be it pump alternation or basic alarming or even just sending a 4 to 20 million back to the control room while having a big, bright display that the people in the field can see. And Devin, you want to close us out here? Yes, I absolutely do. Uh, I want to, again, thank everyone for attending today. Uh, I know we went a little bit over time here. But uh, I want to conclude this presentation with saying that we want to hear from you. We always like to have uh, webinars that are based on <clears throat> technologies and industries, uh, you know, 420 ground loops, uh, what loop powered indicators uh, do and what it means to work with them. So if you have any type of um, questions, comments, concerns, please let us know. And if you have any suggestions of what you would like to learn about on our next webinar, please let us know. Again, this webinar is being recorded. It will be sent to your email address. And I do believe it will be available um, as a link on our website. There was a lot of great questions today. A lot of folks wanted to know uh, starting prices. A lot of uh, folks had a lot of good application questions. So hopefully that sparks some interest and that you can see the true value in the Helios display and you know how it really different, differentiates itself from the rest of the large display market. Joe, if we have any final words? Well, I just want to thank everybody for attending. I hope this was a good introduction to the Helios series to get you familiar with it. And I look forward to 
hearing some applications and helping people find some application solutions where the Helios can really shine and make a difference for you or your customers. All right, everybody. Well, I think that sums up our presentation. Um, if you have any other questions that we didn't uh, get to during this presentation, or if you think of something later on after the presentation, please call in, email us, let us know. We want to hear from you. All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Devin. Thank you.